If you like to open it, experiment, do multiple projects, and get coffee chat with a different designer every day, then you're probably more into working at Google versus Apple. However, if you are more into laser focus, dedicated your precious time into perfecting the design and tuning out all the noises, then you might be more suitable working at Apple over Google. That is what we call company culture in Silicon Valley. Of course, there's just one example. There are way too many things to talk about. But what I can say is people who work at the company are the people who ultimately shape and nurture the culture. Therefore, there's almost always one round of UX interview called culture fit. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through two things and two things only. What is a culture fit interview and what questions you might be expecting from hiring managers in this round. I'll share with you questions that I got asked and questions that I asked candidates before. So in the end, you should get a really good grasp of his essence and anticipate what other questions might be and ultimately be a pro in culture fit interviews. Of course, in a genuine and honest way. This is going to be a short and sweet video. So let's get into it. Yo. everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Clarifying comment, as I was looking this up, I realized that this is called cultural fit interview, not culture fit. But you know what I mean, right? English is not my strength. Anyways, I found this really spot on articles on cultural fit interviews. It walked through the three main themes of a cultural fit interview. Use company values, assess holistically, hire diversely. I think these three themes are on three different levels. The first one, use company value is the easiest one to master, the baseline, the first gate you should pass. And then assess holistically, which gets a little bit more nuanced and subtle, meaning it asks things that are more or less part of you, not something that you can memorize or prep for. You either have it or you don't. Then hire diversely, which is even harder to grasp and even sometimes confusing. So my effort today is to focus on the company value, to show you how company evaluate UX candidates to see if they align with the company value, the team value, and how you might be a great fit for it. Let's dive right into the details. So what is a cultural fit interview in 30 seconds? Essentially, you're trying to make sure that you will have a good time working there and they will have a good time having you working there. It's mutual. They want to make sure you are fit in the company so you don't go, what the Am I doing here? Why do people talk so much here? <sighs> Why are they not telling me anything? It's like if you're a fish, you're not gonna apply for an aviation company because you are expected to fly. Well, I, I get it, there's always an exception, but you know what I mean. To confuse you even more, from what I've experienced, there is company slash team specific culture and the generic culture. As a UX designer candidate, the generic culture is essentially the passport of soft skills that you should have with you all the time, no matter where you're part of. And then for each company, they have their own set of values to focus on. Then to deconfuse you, different companies ask pretty much the same questions. A lot of good theories, but can you give me some examples? Oh yeah, we're gonna get there very soon. Actually, like right now. Next, common questions. Well, we can start with company specific example. Let's just say in the Google interview, they have one round that's specifically about their Googleness interview. I will link this in the description as well. So they have one of the items called high standards. So you can anticipate they will ask questions like, how do you know when you're ready to ship the product? So to gauge like where you define the standard is, like when it's ready to get out the door, or what kind of products, what products out there that you think are really well done? to see if you see product the same way as they do. Then next is self-aware. Again, it's somewhat overlap with culture fit slash professional interviews, background interviews. Classic ones like what are your strengths, what are your weakness, you should know about yourself. So reflect, introspect, you'll get to those pretty easily. Are you learning new things every day? So I got asked by Dorash about this question. If you are hiring, there's a much older candidate interviewing for a team with lots of young people. Will you hire them? Dorash asked me this question. It's somewhat a trick question. I'm not going to give you the answer, but think about it and see how you might answer this one. What is Justine's style? How does that compare to the company style? Are they different? Are they the same? How would they be different? What do you enjoy the most in a design process and why? Well, this is a very classic one that you should also know. Like there are so many faces in it. There are also different disciplines in UX design, visual, interaction, motion, prototype, research, 
Which one do you like best? Do Niantic ask me this? Do Simbuda ask me this? What are you looking for in your new role? DoorDash asks this. This is a pretty standard question, no matter if you're a new grad or a seasoned experienced designer. They will still ask you that. Make sure you know what you're after. What do you work on after you graduate? Apple, I talked about it in the Silicon Valley UX interview one. You can go back to that one if you want. What do you want to work on more in the upcoming summer? This is for internships, so Apple asked me this, Lyft, and Waymo. Any challenges that you're interested in tackling might be and what that company might be doing, so there might be some alignment. Uh, this is not a trick question. You try to genuinely gauge your interest in it. What do you hope to learn in this internship? Why this company? Classic. How do you hear about DoorDash? How did you find us? Do you want to work in UI or UX? Classic debate. I've made a video for it. Link up here, description down below. If you don't know the difference, you better know. So, so watch that video. Next is design awareness, reflection, and philosophy. So what design related, product related things. What's your favorite product? Pinterest asked me this. What's your favorite app? What's your favorite font? What's your least favorite product? and how you improve it. So this is asking for opinion and thoughts. What do you not like about something? That's your opinion and how you can improve it. That requires some of your thinking. Um, how am I designing this way so that it avoid this ping pong or this flow or remove some steps? What is your take on things? How do you approach design problems? Like the way you like to work. Maybe you like to do heavy research or heavy prototyping. What would you change Flash after the internship that you had? So context here, Flash is one of my UX design projects. So this is asking me to reflect on my past projects with new learnings that I gained from my internships and see how I can apply new learnings, insights into my old projects. Again, design never ends. You should always have ways to improve your products and design. What's the hardest part of this project and how you resolve? Which project you are most proud of? Last but not least, collaboration. How do you work with others like product managers or UX researchers or engineers? Google asked me that, Snap asked me that, Chime asked me that, Fitbit asked me that. Who do you collaborate with? Is it just designers or just researchers, just PMs, just eng? What are they? Like how many of them? What if your timeline slipped? What will you do? Or what if you run out of time for this project? What will you do? Have you ever disagreed with your stakeholders? Meaning people that you work with? If so, then follow up with the question, how did you resolve that? What is the resolution of it? How did it end? So those are some of the questions that I know of. They're real questions. And now I'm gonna leave you with my personal take. First, try to answer all those questions. Try to spend some time, think through them, even write them down. Bullet points, phrases are fine. If you don't know some of them, this is great. This is amazing because again, design thinking. This is your research to help you find out what you are missing so that you can iterate yourself to your V2. Try to get yourself into those scenarios, occasions, or projects that could help you get more exposure to get those experiences. After all that, it should be very straightforward. It shouldn't require too much thinking. It's like asking, hey man, nice to meet you. Where did you go to school? Oh, I went to Georgia Tech. I don't really like it. Huh? It should be instinctual. It should be automatic. You're not really manufacturing an answer or memorizing any facts. You should know it by heart and you let it flow naturally. To me, these cultural fit interview questions are more like conversation that I have with my friends. If you feel that way, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you should definitely celebrate that moment by getting yourself a venti purple unicorn frappuccino. Frapp, yo! Yeah, that's it for today. If you find this video useful, destroy the like button to support this very small channel. And consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any future design content. On a similar note, you can take a look at what cultural fit interview question they asked me in my Pinterest interview. It will be also helpful to get a sense of how the end-to-end -end UX interviews work in many companies in Silicon Valley. Check them out right here. Keep designing a better future, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers!